A small suburb of Vancouver in Western Canada is the place where the Gurudwara is located, outside which terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar was killed three months ago. His death has triggered a huge diplomatic deadlock between India and Canada. And now India Today is the first and only channel to reach and report from outside that Gurudwara in Surrey, where terrorist Nijjar was shot at 50 times on the 18th of June. We not only found pro Khalistan posters and flags back up on that Gurdwara after recently being taken down, this is a place where Canadian intelligence and authorities completely bungled an investigation that they now seek to pin on India. Watch this world exclusive by India Today's Anisha Mathur. At the epicenter of the India-Canada diplomatic storm, India today outside the Gurudwara in Surrey, in Canada's British Columbia province. Where Hardeep Singh Nijjar, designated as a terrorist by India, was shot dead by two men in hoodie sweatshirts on June 18th. India today the first Indian media to reach this location for authentic ground reporting. Contrary to Canadian news reports, we found that Khalistani flags and posters targeting Indian diplomats have not been removed from the Gurudwara building. On the very other side of the Gurudwara gates, a poster very clearly calling for the assassination of Indian diplomats still very much outside the Gurudwara. While they may have removed a couple of the posters, the rest very clearly still exist right here. Sari's Guru Nanak Singh Gurudwara, Nijjar led the administration of this sacred site from 2019 until his death on June 18th. The Canadian law is very clear that while you can protest, while you can ask for a referendum, calling for violence or incitement of hatred against a particular group of people, an identified group of people, is not allowed under Canadian law. Canada pointed fingers at India for the murder that took place outside the Sari Gurudwara. India has rejected the accusations from the word go. The Indian media and the Indian government as well as the Canadian government must ask why are these posters calling for assassination of Indian diplomats still up in the Gurudwara at Sari right here behind me. Anisha Mathur bringing you the reports from the ground from Sari BC for India Today. And it isn't just Indian fugitives and terrorists who are being protected with citizenship in Canada. Bangladesh becomes the latest country to step forward, support India and point a finger directly at Canada. And for Bangladesh, it's an even bigger kind of fugitive that is being protected by Canada for the last 25 years. The army officer who went rogue and assassinated their founder, President Mujibur Rahman. Listen to this exclusive interview by the Bangladeshi Foreign Minister to India Today's Geeta Mohan. Let's begin with uh, the India-Canada row. How do you look at this entire row between India and Canada over wanted men who are in India who have been killed in Canada? Canada alleges that there is Indian involvement. India has rejected those allegations. Where do you see this? How do you see the row in itself with visas being suspended, ties almost on a breakdown? You see, we have very good relationship, rock solid relation with India, and also we have good relation with Canada. Both countries are friends. Now, I don't know the detail of this issue uh, between India and Canada, uh, but I know that, you know, we have a problem with Canada, and that's about we have one of the killers of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. You see, his killer is having a good life in Canada. He has been there, and uh, we have been trying to, we have been requesting Canadian government to send back that self, self kill, self confessed killer of Bangabandhu, our father of the nation. But unfortunately, right. the Canada is not uh, listening to us. And they have come up with varieties of excuses. So we also went to the Canadian court to understand what is the status. 
because he's staying in Canada for a long time, and we want to know whether he's a Canadian citizen or not. So we uh, we started a case in the Canadian court, and Canadian, you know, the honorable judges made a you know verdict. They said that Canadian government has no reason not to disclose his status, but yet Canadian government is not telling us anything, neither sending. Only thing they tell us that they have a law that any individual, if he's, if he's sent back to his own country, and if there is a capital punishment in that country, then the, that per, as per that law, they cannot save that individual. So we are saying that Canada must not be, Canada is a government, is a government to rule of law, they believe in legal system. Canada must not be a hub of all the murderers. The murderers, they can go to Canada and take shelter and they can have a wonderful life. While those who he killed and their relatives, they are suffering. So we have been asking Canadian government to deport that new children. They know it, but unfortunately, currently they not, don't even uh, you know, talk to us on this issue. Right, so uh, for the benefit of our viewers, let's just talk about Noor Chaudhary's case. Noor Chaudhary, Rashid Chaudhary, two people who had escaped uh, after killing uh, the father of the nation of Bangladesh, uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, fled. One uh, fled to the United States of America, the other to Canada. Noor Chaudhary is the one who is in Canada. He's now currently in his 70s. Uh, but in terms of the conversations, around 2019, there was some hope that the Canadians were listening and there could be some resolution. Uh, that did not really happen. Is capital punishment the only reason why you think Canada is not extraditing? Or is there reluctance that you see within Canada in sending back these, uh, these people who are wanted in other countries, be it India or for that matter, Bangladesh? Yes, yeah, so once you had one and you send it to Bangladesh, we got it. But the problem is with Canada, they have one after another excuses, and that's what is not understandable. They have the law, but law must not protect a killer. Law must not protect, you know, these bad guys. But unfortunately, Canada is doing it. Now, let me tell you, it is very unfortunate when our father of the nation was killed in 1975. Then we had military government one after the other. And those military government not only rewarded these uh, killers, they posted them in foreign missions and in good jobs. So live there and then they also, um, the military government passed a law that you cannot sue the killers. So the family members, they cannot sue the killers the murderers, but it took almost 21 years for the family members, particularly our current prime minister, who is the eldest daughter of Bangundu uh, Sheikh Mujib Rahman. She had to fight for 21 years to come to power, to change that indemnity, this, you know, Vagas in Yandindo, very criminal in, the, in, in, once that was been repealed, only then we started the due process of law. We have gone through a due process, and those guys who are the killers of our father of the nation, they have been convicted by the highest court in Bangladesh. And we have submitted all the details to the Canadian government that the process was uh, fair, judicious, and it followed all the procedures, and they had the right to defend themselves. But unfortunately, uh, these killers took the shelter in Canada. And I hope Canada, and we have two killers now, right now. One is, be, uh, is sheltered in Canada, no Choudhury. Other one is Russia Choudhury. These two killers are even good life, although their family are still suffering. Right, you're right. In 2009, uh, the Supreme Court of Bangladesh sentenced 11 convicts to death. Five uh, were hanged. But uh, these, are, these are the ones who are still living a good life, like you said. What is the status of his citizenship? Is he a citizen of Canada? Why is Canada protecting him? Because he just went on a visitor's visa and has been extending that. Uh, Canada has not accorded him refugee status. 
So what's the status of Noor Chaudhary and why aren't they really sending him back? If, is we it just know. capital punishment? We don't know the status of Noor Chaudhary. To understand, to find out the status, we submitted a case to the Canadian court and it took a couple of years. After that, Canadian judges, honorable judges, gave a body. And they said the Canadian government is under no obligation not to disclose the status of no children. And since then, we have been requesting the Canadian government to, uh, to tell us his status. Till now, the Canadian government has been refusing to disclose the status, in spite of the fact that their own court made the judgment. Could that be changed, sir? That, but in uh, case of, let me tell you, in case of Russia Chudri, who is in hmm. USA, that's much clearer. Russia Chudri uh, got the, you know, US uh, asylum citizenship by submitting all false documents. Hmm. And uh, since he submitted all false documents, in USA there is a rule that if you get immigration by submitting all the false documents, then your case can be reviewed. So U.S. government, we have, we submitted a request to the U.S. government that Sasha Chodhi submitted all the false documents. He's a murderer. So the U.S. government, um, you know, has been uh, uh, reviewing his case. Right now, it is with the Attorney General Office in USA. But it's taking too much time for the review. But we hope that the U.S. government will review it and will deport him to Bangladesh, as they did. They did. The U.S. government sent another murderer, Mohyuddin, a few years mm -hmm. ago, when they found out that he was a murderer, and therefore they sent him to Bangladesh. And we hope that the Russia Chaudhary, who is also staying in USA, the U.S. government will deport this guy uh, to face justice. Right, sir. Is there room for the death sentence to be changed to life sentence for him to be extradited? And will Canada then agree with Bangladesh? Uh, in our, the... our judiciary is very independent and government cannot intervene in there. But he has a scope for life sentence. If he comes back to Bangladesh, both Nur Chaudhary and Ashur Chaudhary, they come back to Bangladesh, they can ask for a mercy petition to the president of the country. And President may, you know, grant them, uh, grant the, uh, the Marcy petition and can change from life, I mean, execution to life sentence. That president has that priority. In and such a scenario, the... right, sir. Pardon? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, they, they have that privilege to do it. Canadian government knows about it. We told them that he has still one more option. If he come back and then he submit a mercy petition to the president, hmm. president may allow him life sentence uh, instead of execution.